sitting there with my woman of the year with her man, Stella McCartney. She did. What an Olympian there. Just want to give her a big up. That was incredible. Um, I think it's one of the world's worst kept secrets that when Salman Rushdie was dodging the fatwa on his life, uh, he hid out in, in my back garden for a short while. Our family understood the risk. Uh, our young children were told that a lot of men in strange bulky uniforms would be um, playing in the environs of our house. And um, I asked one of the elite members of the Irish special branch, um, were they really expecting some action? Uh, as he and a couple of his comrades were looking a little anxious. No, he replied, no, no sign of the Ayatollah Bono. But your missus is on the rampage and she's told a few of the lads if we don't get the guns out of the sight of the kids, we're going to get these rocket launchers right up our arse. So, it's not a ridicule, but it is a ridiculous situation that Salman finds himself in. Uh, burning books is pretty easy. Setting people's imagination on fire, now that's really, really hard. Ridiculous is the word. Salmon's is a ridiculous talent, a wild, prolific imagination who can match that for scale and intimacy and humor. It's like Dickens took LSD and moved to India. It's like Shakespeare writing for Bollywood. It's like Tolkien and Tolstoy had a subtropical love child. Reading Salman Rushdie novel, it's like sitting at a great banquet, and when it's finished, you feel lighter, a little dizzy. It really is extraordinary who we have in the room with us tonight. And um, I despise what you might have to say, but I will defend with my life your right to say it. Who said that? Liam Gallagher? No, Voltaire, post-punk band from the 80s. It's a ridiculous honor I have been given tonight. There are others close by and closer who stood with their friend. I'm thinking of Martin Amos. I'm thinking of the late, great Christopher Hitchens. Can I say I believe in God and Christopher Hitchens? Um, but it's fallen to me to give this prestigious GQ award and to introduce the man who, as a young copywriter, charged with the Herculean task of selling more chocolate for Nestle, the Aero Bar, showed his young genius by coining the great phrase, irresistible. <laughs> irresistible. Um, yes. Will you welcome to the stage the devil himself, the naughty but nice Salman Rushdie? Yeah, last year I gave one to him. I think we should just do this alternate years, you know, on different platforms, maybe other magazines. <laughs> we could just make it like, it could be a double act, a two-year deal. I give one to him, he gives one to me. But, you know, yeah, nudie magazines, he says. Um, I think it's wonderful to be, to be recognized for having managed to stay alive um, at a time when it was possible not to have done so. And Bono was one of the people, many friends, who supported and helped and came to the aid of the party in those days. So there are many people who were inspiring to me. And I think one of the great things I learned about those years was the was the power of loyal friendship, but it's one of the great lessons I took away from it, how, how people came together to fight a particular threat, and I couldn't have done it without them. So I was just as inspired by them as allegedly I was able to inspire them. But um, I wanted to mention somebody who really was an inspiration to me, who I was able to meet this year after a very long time. When I was a student of history at Cambridge. I had a brilliant professor whose name was Arthur Hibbert, who said to me the most valuable thing anybody ever said to me. He said, 
you should never write history until you can hear the people speak. Because if you, don't, if you can't hear them speak, you don't know enough about them and you can't tell their story. And I thought that was the best advice I ever got for the writing of fiction as well as history. And this year we found that he was still alive, aged in his 90s, still living in retirement in Cambridge, and I hadn't seen him since 1968. Um, and I was able to go and visit him and tell him that this sentence had been the thing that had stuck with me all my life and taught me how to do what I do. And he said, oh yes, I remember saying that. I thought that's not bad at 91, you know. So that's an inspiration that I would like to recognize. Thank you, GQ, thanks very much.